Good morning, everybody. Isn't it another glorious day? Even in lockdown, the weather is being kind to us, isn't it? Um, I hope you're all okay, wherever you are, um, and that you're getting lots of sewing done. And if you're doing all of the scrubs, then I think that is amazing. I really take my hat off to you guys, totally. Um, we have got more scrubs fabric in stock at the moment and uh, it's flying out the door really quickly. Um, we will be, finally, finally, we've got through all of our scrubs patterns orders. So they are now out of the door. So if you have ordered a scrubs pattern, it is on its way to you. Um, we've had to use second class Royal Mail because we've just had so many of them. So it kind of, it do allow between three and five days for it to get there. I apologise if you've been waiting longer than that. I know that Royal Mail has, um, they've kind of got their own issues. I don't know if you've seen any of the Facebook posts that they've been putting up, but um, they've been having, uh, or more newly, they've been having loads of problems trying to get everything out as well. So, hi Donna, how are you? Um, and the photos they've been putting up. Morning Sue. Nice to know I'm not talking to myself, it's lovely. Um, so yeah, they've been having their own issues as well. So please, please bear with us. But all of the scrubs patterns that have been ordered are now out and we're on their way to you. Um, and we're actually going through, uh, I just literally came out of chopping fabric. Uh, morning Lynn, how are you? Uh, so we're doing all of the, getting, trying to get all of the orders out as quick, quick as we possibly can as well. But there's <laughs> no one here but us chickens as they say. So we're on a little bit of a skeleton staff. And uh, hi Christine, how are you? And we're doing our absolute best to get everything out to you as fast as we possibly can. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You're doing an amazing job. Um, and I know people who are on the front line and they've been sending us the most amazing messages to say thank you. And it's just so humbling, it really is, because all I've done is done a pattern which is not a lot really. Um, and you guys are the ones out there that are um, making it all happen. So thank you. Big ticks and gold stars all round, I say. Um, so today, right, we're back on Techniques Tuesday and something that uh, crops up quite a bit when we're doing uh, workshops and stuff like that um, is how to finish things, which is quite an interesting one. And um, to be honest, oh, you're just, Oh, lovely, thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, hi, Nicola, how are you? I'm gonna try and keep up with the uh, comments, but if I miss you, I do apologise. I will come back to you later. Um, yeah, one of the things that we're looking at today is finishing off, and hems are quite an interesting way too, because they or break um, a piece of clothing, really. It can take your sewing up a notch, or it can kind of look a little bit I hate the word homemade because everybody makes things at home, but you kind of get where I'm coming from here. So our most popular workshop without a shadow of a doubt. Hi Leanne. Hi Linda, how are you? Hi Alison. Um, our most popular workshop without a shadow of a doubt is the Love Your Overlocker workshop. Now overlockers are a thing of joy. They are. And if you stroke it and look after it, it will look after you as well. Um, we are going to be doing an online overlocker course that we're going to be putting as part of our subscription club. So if you're interested in that, get signing up for that. I'm just waiting on a certain beardy person to do a little bit more photography for me. <laughs> He's waving at me in the corner over there. And then we will be good to go. But I'm kind of a little bit apprehensive because I just want it to be absolutely perfect, but I know there's no such thing as perfect. So we're going to go with what we've got. Hopefully it'll be going out next week. So if you want to, sign up and let us know that you're interested and you'll be the first to know when it goes live. Um, so today, overlockers can be a little bit scary, but they really aren't. So what I want to do today is to show you how to do a rolled hem with your overlocker. So on the iris top, this is how I finished the frill here. And you can do it in a contrast color and it kind of looks really cool. It just gives it a really nice finish to it. Um, morning Suzanne, morning Brenda. Um, you help to make things possible. Oh, that's, thank you. Well, everything's possible, isn't it, really? So, on this one, this is another iris, 
Now, if I show you, bring it up to the camera, there we go. You can kind of see that sort of edge. So that's what a rolled hem does. Now, overlockers will cut the fabric as well, and then they wrap the threads around the cut edge. So what I'm gonna do is show you, talk you through how to change the settings on your overlocker so that you can do that kind of thing. And it works brilliantly. We've just used it there on um, a woven fabric, but it's a brilliant way of finishing off t-shirts and stuff like that, especially if you're knocking out kids' clothes or a little vest top or anything like that. So I'm gonna take you down on now. So come with me. Let's see if I can move it down there. There we go. I might need to readjust in a sec when I sit down. Right, oh, there we go, that's better. Uh, do I need to bring you closer? Let's have a little look. Oh, sorry, it's got a bit wobbly. There we go. Right, I think that should be okay. Just let me know if you can see. So, I've got my overlock set up to do kind of like ordinary sewing. So, at the moment, but what I've done is I've just put uh, coloured threads on it. So, if you can see, I've just put four different colour threads on. Now my machine has is colour coded. Most of them will be. Okay. Hi Sharon, hi Rose. What make? Uh, it's a Janome. It's a Janome 6234XL, which is a kind of middle of the road one. It's not one of the most expensive. It's not one of the cheapest. It's a coarse one. It kind of, it's, it works out quite it's quite good really. It's got a couple of features in it that I quite like that I'll talk about later. Um, so if I push that that way, there we go. You can see a bit clearer. So you can see on my here, there we go. I've put different coloured threads on. So they correspond with the different uh, loopers and needles. So I've got green for my lower looper. I've got pink for my upper looper. I've got blue for my right needle and yellow for my left needle. So I can show you what they do. So I'm just going to whiz this through quickly. There. So you can see now, there we go. So we've got those colours and I've got the green on the back there. So what we want to do now, if I hold that up as I'm talking, there. So what we want to do is we want to take out that yellow thread, okay? Because we want to do something very narrow, we're going to lose that left-hand needle because we don't need that one. All that's doing is making the stitches go right the way across and they're, they're giving us this kind of edge, this finishing, rather a neatening kind of overlock stitch rather than the rolled hem. So to do that, it's really easy. In your little toolkit, one of these little tiny screwdriver, the only thing you want to do is when you're unscrewing the screw is don't take the screw out okay this is yeah that's all brilliant yeah um leanne's popped the link up there that's brilliant and charlie's looking too hello charlie <laughs> right so what i'm going to do is unscrew the screw which is here i don't know if i bring that down a bit you might be able to see a bit i can't necessarily we see where i'm pointing because all the comments are coming up in the wrong place but that's fine so you've got two screws that hold your needles in place and what we want to do is usually the top one goes to the left needle and the bottom one goes to the right needle. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it threaded because that way my needle won't disappear down inside. So this is running my specs out, sorry. So all I'm going to do is undo that top one and I'm literally going to just do it a turn and then I can slide out my needle. Okay, it's still attached and then I can just pull that thread out. I'm going to keep that safe. I'm going to pop that in my little sample there. And now I can just unthread this and flip it out the way. So I'm not completely unthreading it, I'm keeping it out of the way. So now what it's going to do, it's just going to do a kind of a narrow hem. So that's 
by taking out that needle that's what we've done okay so we've just created a really narrow little edge you're right over there uh, someone would ask me. Oh, do you want to do zoom close ups? Oh, yes. This is where it helps having a beardy man here. So, actually, he's going to lift off the camera and do some clever cameraman stuff. <laughs> there we go. So, I'm getting a bit wibbly now. Let's move that out of the way for you. Oh, hang on. If I can't move that. There we go. Right. Okay. So, now we're going to do proper stuff. So, we've got. That's what we've done by taking out that left hand needle, okay? And that is actually quite cool. You can use that for lots of different things. Um, but what we want to do now is to change the settings on the machine. So it's going to do a rolled hem, and that's quite clever. So I'm gonna open up the uh, thingy here. Right, Charlie, do you want to come down and have a look in here? So this is the interesting bit. What we've got are all the mechanics in here, and this is nothing to be frightened of. I know it looks scary. What we want to do, first of all, is when we're altering anything, is actually turn the machine off. I am so guilty of not doing this, but it will save your fingers in the long run. Now, this is my top blade. This is my upper blade here, and this is the knob that moves that. So all I'm going to do is to push that in and roll that, and it will just click out of the way. Okay, I'll do that again. Now, if you want to, you can push it and turn it and it just clicks out the way. So you are removing that top blade and that's a real safety feature there. Then what we want to do is to move this now the stitch width finger in here. And this is a little, the knob that kind of slides backwards and forwards. So if you look here, actually I'm gonna put, put it back on again so you can see, because I'm living dangerously. Um, because we've moved the top blade out of the way, we can move this bit here. Now, if I push my bottom blade out of the way, I can slide this back. Can you see that bit moving? That, I'll do it again, there we go. That is your stitch width finger. So it'll have two different settings. So we've got S here for standard sewing, and we want to pull that back, so it's R for rolled hem. Then I can let my bottom blade go back, and I can bring my top blade back up again. Okay, that's all we need to do underneath there. Then, oh, there we go. Then what we want to do is to, we basically altered the width of the stitch again. So by pulling that little stitch width finger back, we're kind of allowing the threads to kind of wrap tighter around the fabric. So what we want to do now, and this is one of the things I like this machine, is because it has a lower looper pretension setting slider, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, but what we want to do is to make sure that your lower looper is tightened up. And that makes sure that the threads wrap around the edge of your fabric. Now this one is quite nice because it's got this slider on the front here. Charlie, if you want to have a look, there we go. So this slider is your lower looper pretension setting slider. Now we've kind of given it all kinds of different names in the in the workshops when we run there we go <laughs> you can see me now in our workshops we kind of people call it bob or i don't know cyril or whatever you want to call it because it's a bit of a mouthful but basically what we want to do is to click that over from standard into rolled hem position because that automatically tightens up your lower looper thread so that's absolutely fine the next thing we want to do is to change the stitch length so we're just going to take that down so this is my stitch length here. I'm just gonna take that down to R for rolled hem. Really easy. I also wanna check my differential feed is in the neutral position, which is one, because I don't wanna make, sh I wanna make sure that the only thing that I'm changing is the settings for rolled hem. So we keep everything neutral and all we're doing is setting it up to sew rolled hem. So we should be there with a bit of luck and a following wind. What have we got? We've got that one, we've got that done, we've got that done, we've got that done, we've got that done. Cool, let's give it a go and see if I've remembered everything. So all I'm gonna do now is just, as I would do normally, and I'm gonna trim off just a teeny bit. Oops. So, 
Now, sometimes on your machine, depending on the fabric that you're using, you may have to tweak it slightly, but that's what we've ended up with. There we go. If I move that back, I don't know if you can see it. Ah, oh, Marie, yeah, overlockers are. Oh. They're fabulous, they really are. Now, this is just working on a calico, so it's a really robust, stable kind of fabric. But so, And you might not necessarily want to create this kind of an edge on this type of fabric. So using it on a jersey, or even a really fine kind of uh, georgette or a chiffon or something, it's just a really nice edge where a normal hem is gonna be a bit trickier. So what I'm gonna do is run it through on a bit of jersey. Now this is going to stretch so what I'm going to do is start off with it on my kind of basic settings see what happens and then I'll know what I need to alter. So I'm just going to pop this through done actually I haven't changed the differential feed or anything if I lay this on the table you can see what's happened there we go can you see how it's got that little bit of a wave to it which actually could be a really nice way oh, it's a bit of fluff there a really nice way of finishing um, the hem of a, a t-shirt or a vest or something like that or even if you've just got a bit of uh, scrap jersey, you can make an infinity scarf or something like that. The other thing, now if you want it, uh, there we go, now we've got, this is not really, this, we've got this basically just to test stuff out with. It's, basically, it's a polyester um, twinkle organza. And I probably had this left over when I was making tutus for my daughter. So, and she's 18 in a couple of weeks, so it shows you how, old this is, how long this has been hanging around. But if I cut it on the bias, we can get a similar kind of an effect. So I'm just gonna cut that through. Because with a woven fabric, it's not gonna stretch if we stitch it on the straight or the cross grain. But if we sew it on the bias, that's where we've got the movement. So if we put that into the overlocker, we should get a nice kind of wiggly lettuce edge. So let's give that a go. Now, we've got a little bit going on, but if I just hold my finger just on the plate there and just pull it just a teeny bit, so I'm up just applying an extra little bit of pressure. There we go. Now, we've got a little bit more wiggle, okay? Can you see? There we go, we've got a little bit more wiggle. So I'm not work with the pictures. Um, Diane, just refresh it because sometimes it kind of distorts a little bit when we're doing a live. So try refreshing it and it should kind of fix itself. There we go. Now, problem. We've got a little hole, can you see, where the actual stitching has come away from the edge. So what we need to do now is to alter the cutting width so that the stitch is taking more of a bite, a bigger bite of the fabric. And that's really easy to do. So, back down to the mechanics, Charlie, please. So, what I'm doing is I'm releasing that top blade again, and I'm going to move this bottom blade out slightly. Oh, no, wrong one. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So, I'm just going to increase the cutting width. So, can you see this bit here moving? So, this is my bottom blade, and I'm just bringing it out to the right more width in the in the the bite of the stitch kind of thing so let's give that another go 
So that's better. So that's given us much more of a solid kind of an edge. There we go, and you can see how beautifully wiggly that's gone. So it's a really nice one. You can't find a differential feed switch. It will be there, Julie, it really will. Morning, Laurie, how are you? Um, go back to your, um, your kind of manufacturer's manual and it will be in there, it really will. So that is a really nice quick way of finishing off all kinds of different fabrics. Um, and that's a jersey version. Now I haven't altered the differential feed on this, but again, if you wanted to, there we go, if you wanted to make it slightly wigglier, you could just try stretching it a little bit, or you could try changing the differential feed. I'm just gonna alter the camera, there we go, you need to chop my head off there. <laughs> that's fine. Unfortunately, Charlie can't see what he's filming because the camera's around the other way but there we go so I just thought I would show you that um, it's a quite a nice quick and easy way of just hemming something um, so if you're knocking out little vest top t-shirts or something like that you can just do a nice little wiggly hem around the edge or if you're making little um, shorty PJs or French knickers or something like that you can just do a little kind of lettuce edge around the legs of those as well and uh, it's a really nice way it's a nice way to actually increase your technical vocabulary as well. So it's all about increasing the things that you know and increasing the language that you use to describe them because that way it informs more of your sewing, if you see what I mean. So yeah, I would definitely have a play. Try and raid your stash or find different kinds of fabrics and have a play with what kinds of finishes you can get on your overlocker. Um, set it up all to start with. Whenever you're starting to do anything, whenever you're kind of altering things, always make sure that you've got it in its kind of default setting first. And I would always set it up so that you know that your four thread overlock is working fine. Now, on my machines, the tension is all set to three. There we go, tension's all at three. The normal stitch length, is going to be about three or four differential feed will be one and everything else will be as your as kind of like your standard settings so always try with this first and then have a play um, and don't forget the tension isn't really going to be much of a problem now if I was really fiddling with my um, tension for getting the rolled hems absolutely perfect I might have a play with the upper looper and the lower looper just to see if I can get it absolutely perfect but always make sure that you make a note of where you're starting from because that way you'll know how much to alter and from kind of what your baseline is really so that's how to do a rolled hem on your overlocker I hope you're going to give that a go um, it works perfectly with the iris pattern that we've got um, Making a sample library is what we did at your club. Yeah, exactly. It's a brilliant way. If you're doing different samples, write down what your settings are, and that way you've got that as a reference then to work, kind of, you know, work from when you're looking at doing different things. Um, this was brilliant. It works fantastically with the iris pattern. You could even do it around the um, frills on the cilia, or if you're doing the cape dress and you're putting a frill around the bottom, you could just edge that with a bit of rolled hem as well. Um, we're going to be doing more patterns later on in the year if I ever get if I ever get past the scrubs patterns and fabrics. We have got more patterns coming out for you, um, and we're working on the uh, subscription club as well. So we've got the overlocker course going into there very soon. Um, make the most of today. It's another glorious day. It's a little bit chilly out there, so you might want to get your Bianca out just to kind of sit in the sunshine and have a cup of coffee. I'm just going to alter the camera's game because he's too okay. <laughs> That's fine. Lovely. A film career awaits, somebody says, shout. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, remembered tomorrow night, the Great British. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
Um, Great British Sewing Bee's on tomorrow night. Don't forget everybody. And um, our lovely friend Mark Francis is one of the contestants. He's been sitting on that news. Now, some people may have kind of figured it out, but he has been keeping this secret for ages and now we're going to be team mark all the way so don't forget to watch tomorrow night and uh enjoy the day and we will see you on friday for some more lovely fabrics so take care and have a play with your overlocker see you soon